hello students welcome back to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time we are going to solve this problem which says that the chandelier is suspended from the wall and ceiling using rods a b and b c which have diameters of 3 mm and 4 mm respectively if the average normal stress in both rods is not allowed to exceed 150 megapascal determine the largest mass of the chandelier that can be supported if theta equals to 45 degree so if the stress in both of these rods must not exceed 150 megapascal we have to find the mass which can be supported if this theta is equal to 45 degrees so now you guys can have uh, can solve this problem using two methods uh, you guys can solve this problem by considering the force in the force in this bc and the force in this ab and then resolving these forces and applying the sum of the forces in the x and in the y and then you guys will get two equations and then for that uh, finding the forces in this ab and the force in this bc you guys must solve two equations simultaneously but what i am going to do is that i am going to solve it um, by using the geometrical method i will consider the force in bc i will consider the force in ab and the weight and if if this point b is in equilibrium then these three forces uh, must make a closed triangle then the resultant of these three forces is zero if so if the resultant of these three forces is zero then these three forces must make a closed triangle according to the head to tail rule so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to consider the force in this bc rod so let's say this is fbc and this fbc is making 45 degree this is given right so i am going to consider this fbc it is making 45 degree with the horizontal so let me show that angle here so this angle is 45 degrees and similarly we will have the force in ab let's say this is the force in ab so this is the force in ab and the weight of the chandelier is going to act vertically downward so this is the weight which is going to act vertically downward and as i have told you that if if this joint b is in equilibrium these three forces must make a closed triangle according to the head to tail rule so according to the head to tail rule we must we must have the let's say i put this here and then this will be the diagram right so let's say so we can say that the pink one is fbc this one is the red one is the force in a b rod and the black one is the weight so the weight will be mass times 9.81 since the mass is required right so we will write that this is 9.81 times mass and if a b is making angle 30 degrees here so if the angle is 30 degree here then we will have that same angle 30 here as well so this is 30 and this is 45 if this is 45 then this is 45 right so this angle is we can say that this angle is 30 plus 45 so we can say 30 plus 45 so this is 75 right this is 75 and if this weight is vertical and if this is horizontal and this angle is 45 then this angle is 45 as well so we will say that this angle is 45 and similarly if if this angle is 30 and this is vertical this angle is 90 degree this is 30 then this angle is 60 so we can say that this angle is 60 degrees so now using the sines law we can find the relationship between fab and fbc right so we can say if we apply sines law to this diagram we can say that fab divided by the sine of the opposite angle so this is the opposite angle to fab which is 45 degrees so fab divided by sine of 45 this must be equals to fbc divided by the sine of the opposite side so this is fbc so the sine of the opposite angle so sine of 60 and from this we can say that if i multiply both sides with sine of 45 so we will have fab equal to fbc sine of 45 divided by 
sine of 60. So we can say that f a b is equal to sine of 45 divided by sine of 60. So this is 0 0.816, 0 0.816 f b c. So f a b is equal to 0 0.816 times f b c. This is a very important relation, right? So we can say this is f a b in terms of f b c. Similarly, if we apply the cosines rule, if we apply the cosines rule and if we take this side, right, so this because this square will be equal to this square plus this square. So apply, let me write that applying cosines law, we can say that 9.81 multiplied by mass square is equal to F A B square plus F B C square minus 2 times F A B F B C cos of the included angle between F A B and F B C so this is 75 degrees so cos of 75 so now we have this equation right and we know F A B in terms of F B C so we can plug in the value of F A B here right or we can plug in the value of F B C here it's up to you guys right so let's say if I plug in F A B value so we can say that this is 9.81 so F A B is 0 0.816 F B C. So this will become square plus F B C square minus 2. Again, F A B is 0 0.816 F B C times F B C cos of 75 degrees. So from this we can say that 0 0.816 square. This gives us 0 0.666 approximately so this is 0 0.666 fbc square plus fbc square minus 2 times 0 0.816 multiplied by cos of 75 so this gives us 0 0.422 0 0.422 and you guys can see now we have two fbc's here fbc times fbc is fbc square so this is FBC square. So now we can take FBC common from both of these terms. So this will be equal to 9.81 M square. And this will be 0 0.666 plus 1 minus 0 0.422 FBC square 0 0.81 M square. So 0. 666 plus 1 minus 0 0.422 this gives us 1.244 so this is equal to this is equal to 1.244 you can see 1.244 fbc square right and now we can take the square root on both side of equation so this will become 9.81 m and this will become 1.244 square root FBC. And now if I divide both sides of equation by the square root of 1.244, so we can write that 1.244 square root. This will cancel out and we will get FBC in terms of the mass. So we can say that 9.81 divided by square root of 1.244 this gives me 8.795 times mass. So this is now FBC in terms of mass, right? And similarly, we have the relationship between FAB and FBC. So now we can say that FAB from that equation, let's say this is equation one. So from equation one, we can say that FAB is equal to 0 0.816 times FBC. Now FBC is 8.795 times mass. So we can say that 8.795 multiplied by 0 0.816. This is, we can say that this is 7.177 times mass. So FAB in terms of mass is like this, right? 
So now we are asked to find the mass of the chandelier if the average normal stress in both the rods must not exceed 150 megapascal. So we can say that the average normal stress in rod AB is equal to FAB which is now 7.177 times mass divided by the area of AB which is uh, the area of rod AB which is pi divided by 4 and the dia of AB is 3 mm right so 3 divided by 1000 is 0 0.003 square and this must not exceed 150 megapascal so 150 into 10 raised to power 6 so if I multiply both sides of equation with this and divide both sides of equation by this so we will be left with the mass so from this we can say that mass is equal to 150 into 10 raised to power 6 multiplied by pi divided by 4 0 0.003 square divided by 7.177 so this will give us 150 into 10 raised to the power 6 multiplied by pi divided by 4 multiplied by 0 0.003 square divided by 7.177 so this gives me 147.7 kgs so mass right and similarly if we consider the average normal stress in bc that must be equals to fbc and fbc is we know that fbc is 8.795 times mass divided by the area of rod AB so pi divided by 4 and the dia of rod AB is 4 mm so 4 divided by 1000 is 0 0.004 square and this must be equals to 150 megapascal again if you multiply both sides by this area and divide by this so you will get the mass so the mass will be 150 into 10 raised to the power 6 multiplied by pi divided by 4 0 0.004 square divided by 8.795 so this will give us 8.795 this is 0 0.004 so this gives us mass equals to 215 sorry 214.32 kg or 0.3 kg now as you guys can see that if the mass of the chandelier increases 147.7 kgs then the average normal stress in ab will exceed 150 megapascal so this means that the bottleneck is this mass right so the mass of the chandelier must be equal to 147.7 kg or less than this right so this is the answer for the problem so the mass should be equal to or less than 147.7 kg if you want to have the average normal stress in both the rods equals to 150 in mega pascal so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning let me know in the comments if this helps do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from mechanics of materials by rc hibler